Want to achieve network marketing success? Then you're in the right company. Hello, and welcome to Leave Nothing to Chance, hosted by networking marketing giant, John Solider. Learn everything you need to know about the network marketing space from somebody who's actually done it. Join us every week for front row seats as we feature some of the finest and most successful personalities in network marketing. Leave nothing to chance. Join us now. Dr. Doug Fireball, legend in the industry, icon in the industry, chief executive officer at Wealth Fuel Home Business Training, uh, which is a coaching corporation. You've authored many, many books, many, many articles, many, many things about our industry. You've been a radio talk show host, uh, a thought leader. You've helped thousands of people to uh, build seven-figure incomes. And, and, and a lot of people who haven't built seven-figure incomes but have built that extra nest egg money that uh, is coming in pretty handy in this uh, current economic situation, which is probably as important, if not more so, uh, to them, right? Because it's all- in the- Amen. Individual, individual sport um, on a team basis. And uh, Doug, let's just, let's just start at the top. You know, how are you? And uh, how did you get in this crazy industry way back? You know, uh, John, first and foremost, again, what an honor it is to be on anything you do, period, in a discussion. Back in 86, I was at a gym working out in Roanoke, Virginia, where I'm originally from. Today, we live in Florida. And somebody handed me uh, one of those big honking VHS tapes. Remember those? Yep. And um, he says, hey, I want you to watch this. I didn't even have a VH player. I was like, okay. So I took it over to my mom and dad and I watched it and I was like, well, isn't that interesting? So uh, I talked to him a couple more times about it and he says, well, you know, we're holding a meeting uh, on next Saturday from people coming up from Virginia Beach and would love to have you attend. Well, I, I was like, well, okay, what is it? Like a job interview or something? Well, sort of. And after I saw the meeting and met with the people and I was like, well, this is really interesting. So I got some product, a product I really liked. About a month later, I jumped in. And actually, I don't say this very much, but I hit the top rank in ND, the fastest at that point in the company, it was nine months. And it kind of went from there. But the problem was, just like you probably can relate to this, John, it, it, I didn't know how to build. And when I built it, I, I didn't know how to keep it, so it kind of went that way. And I had a couple of years I really struggled. I mean, really struggled. I slept on a buddy's couch for about six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. Another buddy uh, in his basement, he had a bed there. Couldn't afford an apartment. You know, I was broke, but I wanted to make this work because I quit my job and I just went full force. And from there, it's amazing, John, how hunger can make you do things, right? And uh, fortunately... I uh, started building and eventually figured some things out, partnered up with uh, my partner. And as they say, the rest is history. And what a great journey it's been. In 1999 or 2000, I sold the spots that we had in the company back to this company and the number one earner. I started Passion Fire, which was now a retired blog. And we have been doing coaching, training, writing, recording, courses, all that other stuff for about 20 years. And Doug, I, I mean, I, I'm been a big fan of yours, but just give people an idea because I know some of the people that you shared the stage with, but I'll just name categories and uh, you can fill in the blanks. Uh, for, <laughs> okay. for, former presidents of the United States. Bill Clinton, George Bush. Luminary CEOs in Viet network marketing or traditional business. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, probably the guy that used to run uh, IBM and then of course, uh, There was General Electric. What was that guy's name? The names escaped me, to be honest. I know who they are. Jack Jack Uh, Welch. Yes. Yes, Jack Welch. And I did this because I got invited into some of Zig Ziglar's motivated. He used to do something called motivation, motivated events. And I met so many people and I shared the stage with so many people, had the opportunity to learn about a lot about speaking. And uh, Oprah Winfrey. I don't know, John Maxwell, of course, John, John's a great guy, uh, just on and on and on. And, you know, I was like in awe. I was like, can I have your autograph? <laughs> you know, I was like, man, this is just, what am I doing here? That type of thing. Been there a few times where it's like, what am I doing with this guy? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And you've shared some stage with some huge names too. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. Oh, yeah. I have, but yeah, you got the bigger ones. I the, the, I met Reagan at my college commencement, believe it or not. Oh, I never met him. 
1983. But, you know, I, I was in a line to shake his hand. And then, uh, ironically, I was doing a consulting job for a company in the industry. The now owner of that company lived in Manhattan. And we were having lunch at, at um, ooh, uh, some famous restaurant. And uh, Donald Trump came in. This was pre you know, pre-president. This is right. the, uh, boy, it's, it's 20, about 20 years ago. And um, he came in and he, he the guy I was with had been at his wedding. Right. So I said, I said, man, that's Donald Trump. He goes, settle down. He goes, you want to meet him? I'm like, yeah. Wow. I don't have an iPhone back then. So I met, I, I met Donald Trump and, and uh, it was funny because the guy I was with, and I never mentioned, you know, names on this in the industry, but the guy I was with knew him, you know, well enough. They had done some real estate uh, stuff over the years. His family had anyway with them. And um, it was just so funny because he says, how do you guys know each other? And of course, you know, I start telling him, well, you know, my friend's trying to buy a company and I'm trying to help him. And in what right. space? I tell him network marketing. And you know what he said? He said, if I wasn't doing real estate, I'd be doing network marketing. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a pretty good endorsement. Whatever people do or don't think of the Donald, that was a pretty good endorsement. And of course, you know, I was already in the industry a long time at that point, but I tell people that all the time. And it's like, hey, no matter what you think of him, good, bad, or indifferent as president, you, you can't you can't look at his business record with anything but awe, you know, with what the guy's done. But anyway. I would agree with that. There, there's there's few people I really, I read everything that he's put out, half of since the art of the deal, but there's other things that other books as well that I've just, I got a, this success library that that has a lot of books. And one of the things, one of the books that really impacted me, probably the biggest in the 80s was his book, The Art of the Deal. Yep. Great stuff. It's, it's funny you say that, Doug. And it's perfect segue, actually, because because we know each other for so long and so well. I didn't even write questions. I wrote a couple and I was like, yeah, hey, Doug and I, we could, you and I could probably talk for three hours without even, you know, missing a beat. So yep. it's funny you say that because... My my son, a company you and I met at where you were doing a lot of great training for, for our organization a number of years ago now. I thought that's 20 years ago, I think. When I started that organization in 1996, mm -hmm. I put together a cassette tape, right? You remember these things, right? My son, who's now 19, was cleaning the garage a couple of years ago. And he comes in the house and he says, hey, dad, what is this? I found it in the garage. So I'm thinking he's asking about the content. And I start giving him the, you know, the sales pitch on the history of the product. He's like, I know all that stuff. He goes, what is this physical thing, right, called a cassette tape? And uh, he leads me to my next question. Uh, by, by the way, he, he says he's found the art of the deal and he's reading that. He's a young entrepreneur and he's doing very, very well right. in his own business. But along those lines, Doug, okay. How has technology changed what you do as a trainer, as a coach, as a speaker, as a, as a thought leader, et cetera, et cetera? You know, going from cassette tapes and DVDs and all the other stuff that you and I used and, you know, in the really old days, you know, this thing called word of mouth because we didn't have anything, you know, maybe a piece of paper. How have you seen that transition? And how can our listeners benefit by some of these modern technologies that, you know, they can run off their phone or some other apparatus? Man, you man, yeah, that's a great question. I've never been asked that question before. Um, I think the biggest transition and the biggest benefit from see it's transition from uh, cassette to CD to MP3s uh, is speed. I think it has allowed me to work at a much faster pace. Uh, we're, we've gotten into AI, which you know, and you'll laugh at this, but AI is still where. Facebook was back in 2004, AOL dial-up type of thing. So I'm my I'm just kind of taking my time with that. We we do utilize it for copy, we do utilize it for ads and stuff like that, videos. But uh, we're just kind of kind of learning the ropes in a in a way that uh, will work for us and our clients. I think that how coaching and how training has changed is the availability of being able to communicate. We all live in a world of conversation, communication. Doesn't matter what what you do, real estate, insurance, doctor, grocery store, doesn't matter. It's all communication. It's all conversation. And what today has allowed us to do is allowed us to make very, very short leaps in communication time because what used to take you could record the cassette tape, then you'd have to send it off and get cassette tapes made, copies of it. Then you get it back and you have to put them in envelopes and send them out. And same thing with CDs, but CDs was a whole lot quicker than the cassette tapes. So cassette tapes took, you know, probably three times as long to, to duplicate. And what has happened, it moved to MP3 and it made it even faster. So the biggest component for network marketing distributors, as well as 
anybody that wants to coach, train, and all that other stuff. I believe that you can talk to more people in a shorter amount of time, create more exposures of your product and your business in a shorter amount of time, utilizing technology. And I don't have to tell you that it's a whole lot easier working direct selling, network marketing fast than it is slow. And that's the biggest probably change that I have seen because I'm able to coach more people because of Zoom uh, and various other things in, in a much quicker fashion. I hope that was sort of what you're looking for. But for the network marketer, it has sped up the ability to communicate in such a way that you can talk to as many people in a day as it used to take a week. It's that simple. And nothing gets broken in terms of the communication channel. That's the other thing is like, you know, to that point, right? You know, we took a cassette tape, we stuck it in a, a, the bubble, <laughs> those bubble envelopes, right? You step on them, they make all these great noises. <laughs> and, and you'd have them in the car and it'd be squishing together. I mean, some of the younger people say, what are these old guys talking about? But but uh, you remember them. Some of the, most of the people do, actually. But to that point, right? You know, you were hoping and praying, hey, I called Doug, Doug's living down in Florida. I'm in Texas, man. Let me mail this to him. And I call you up and you go, hey, John, I got the tape. The only bad news is it got squished. <laughs> so I can't listen to Oh, let me send you another one. There it goes another 10 days, right? Not to mention more money for the, the tape yeah. and the envelope and the postage and going standing on the line. I mean, distributors are spoiled today when they have an app on their phone and they can just go, right, let me send you something. Doug. They don't get it. So let's, let's segue from that, Doug. Let's talk about our industry because I think we're at an interesting juncture, you know, between the gig economy that has taken a lot of people's attention where, hey, I need mm -hmm. to make, you know, because I mean, what here's what hasn't changed since you and I started, right? What hasn't changed is people's need for that plan B, that extra money to come in. You know, here, here's mm -hmm. some for Here's some for examples, and I'll, and I'll get to a detailed question on you in a second here. So, you know, my utility bill here at my house in Richardson with the pool and the air conditioning and everything else was about $500 to $700 a month two, two years ago. That mm -hmm. same bill is now coming in between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars a month. The food store, same, right? A hundred dollars of groceries, even if it was at Whole Foods, was four bags two years ago. Now that's two bags if you're lucky, if they're even full all the way. The gas pump, we don't even need to talk about. If you live in California, you're at six bucks a gallon, and who knows what it's going to be. And even here in Dallas, it's getting to be you know three eighty, three ninety for unleaded. So you know we don't need to tell people what the problem is, and those problems have existed before, right? Because mm -hmm. economics are relative, right? People made less money, things cost less, but they made less money. Now you make more money, but they cost more, et cetera, et cetera. So having said all that, let me give you a hypothetical question. You've been in this industry a long time. And let's just say, I don't know if you're, you're one of your Florida houses today, I think you're at, or your, your Michigan house, wherever, wherever you are, you got some neighbor who's observed you over the last couple of years. And they go, hmm, Doug wants to hit golf balls at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. I see him with his golf clubs going to the golf club. Hmm. Doug wants to, you know, ride his bike at three o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. He can do it. I see Doug and his wife out there, you know, they're taking a walk on a, on a you know, Thursday morning at times when I'm normally at work. And they've observed that, you know, from a distance. And, you know, as you know, and I know, humans observe other humans, right? The, the behavior is something that we, 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 sometimes we model it, but we, we, we study it, right? And they've watched you for the last couple of years. And they've watched mm -hmm. me coming and going to, you leave your residence for a while, where does he go, right? And they hear through the grapevine from another neighbor. Well, Doug's involved in that network marketing industry somehow. And, uh, Let's just say prior to 2020, they looked at all of that and they said, well, that's good for him. But, you know, those pyramid schemes, they don't work. You know, Aunt Tilly bought a distributor kit in some company, stuck it under her bed, didn't make any money, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. We hear all that nonsense all the time, but it's real. And, and, and it's people's observations. Again. But so they just thought, hey, maybe Doug's one of the lucky ones. Maybe Doug owns one of these. things. We don't know. We don't know Doug. We just know him from a distance. But all of a sudden, and let's let, let, let's throw some let's characterize these people as this. It's a 60 year old dad and a 25 year old son. And they've been watching you the last, whatever, four or five years. And they go, hmm, during COVID, Doug didn't seem to miss a beat. Okay, now COVID hopefully is over to some degree. And they say, you know what? The son has his education, worked hard for his degree, spent money, maybe has school loans, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and started his business career, let's say, you know, 2018, 2019, was doing well, making some money. And all of a sudden we know what happened in, you know, the winter of 2020. Mm -hmm. And dad was on the other end of the spectrum. Dad was, you know, our age group. And he was looking at, hey, man, more golf balls to hit, more fish to catch, more grandkids to spend time with, more churches to build, more whatever it is that turns him on. And all of a sudden, his life was impacted. 
And now all of a sudden you throw in this economic situation, this economic downturn that seems like it's got no upturn and hopefully will at some point. But at the end of the day, reality is reality. They go, you know what? We're going to go down the street and we're going to we're, we're, we're going to get our, our uh, gusto up. We're going to go down. We're going to knock on Doug's door, even though we don't know him that well. And they come in and, they, you know, they, they knock on the door and they say, hey, Doug, you got you got 30 minutes for us, man. And you say, sure, sure. Come on in, fellas. You know, how are you? What can I do for you? And they ask you the question. And here's the real question. Why network marketing? at the tail end of 2023 going into 2024. Why is now good timing for people to get involved in this space? Great question. Again, uh, with with the amazing success of Amazon and now, you know, like walmart.com and, and all these other different types of companies that are marketing online, uh, it's gotten more and more easier to purchase products. But the problem has always been there's not that warm and fuzzy feeling having somebody to talk to or somebody to sell it to you or at least have somebody to support you through it. And I know a lot of people that have ordered a lot of stuff from Amazon, but when they found out that they could still order stuff, but from a network marketing company and the products generally are better, then suddenly they realize, well, I know that Amazon's got their merchant thing that you can make, I don't know, 10%, whatever. And then you can't build anything else. It's just an affiliate program. But with network marketing, you actually have the ability to be able to build something that can help people. You have the ability to be able to do what Amazon does, but get paid on other people's efforts as well. And I think the biggest thing is it's taken what is really popular today. Even with Uber, Lyft rides, you know, it, it's, it's just one at a time, one ride at a time. What if you could have that along with about 200 other people getting paid and getting commissions on that? So if somebody was asking me why network marketing, well, it's pretty simple. More and more, and thank God it is, is moving towards the product because the FTC is really focusing and pushing that, getting more and more into the product focus, which I think I've always said, John, the customer is what builds wealth, the distributors multiply it. And the consumption of product, the consumption or usage of services have always been the driver of, of any and all six, seven, eight figure incomes. And when somebody asked me about that, I would say it's never been such a better time to be in network marketing because it's starting to focus on the catalyst of what drives wealth. Many people, you know, and probably you have seen this in your group because you have a phenomenally huge group. Many, many people come and go. And the reason why is because they were focused on the wrong thing. And that's why that in our, when we were building, we would say your consumers are what's going to build wealth. Your, your distributors are what's going to multiply it. You got to have a balance. And that's one of the things that right now, because it is starting to really, really, really focus in just about every company that I've ever, well, I'm currently working with as well, they're all starting to focus 80% on product and then 20% on multiplying the consumption through you know, consultants, distributors, and things like that. I think it's a better chance today, a better opportunity day, better timing today than it was eight or 10 years ago when everything was about build, 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 team, 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 build, 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 team, team, teams, and things got consumed on a temporal basis. You understand what I'm saying? I got a buddy right now, it's got a 90, 80, 90,000 uh, auto ships, and he does really, really well. He's number one earner, good friend of mine. Just got off the phone with him about an hour ago. And the company made the switch about five or six years ago, and particularly after COVID, and went more towards a product orientation. And he says his business went like this, straight up. Uh, the company I came from, which I'm not going to mention, but we have caps and fruits and, uh, fruits and vegetable products and capsules, and then they expanded it. They have six to 700,000 auto ships. You heard me correctly. Mm -hmm. And you know JR, mm -hmm. Roberti. Very well. Uh, and it's all about the products. So if it were me today, and it's a, it's a long way of getting around an answer, John, there's no better time to get into direct sales and network marketing than today because the focus is just absolutely where it needs to be. 
the comp plans had been tweaked to the point of where now they're actually field friendly. And most importantly, the training out there, you're one of the best trainers out in the profession. The training is extraordinary to grow you. And we used to say when we were recruiting, we would say the one thing I can promise you is over the course of the next 24 months, you're going to get a hundred thousand dollar value in training. It's going to change your life. So there's no better time than right now to get into network marketing. And I think some people blame COVID for, well, it really hurt my business. No, it tweaked it and transitioned it into something much better. No better time I've been in my 37 years in this profession. This is the best time to ever get into network marketing. Well, and you know, Doug, I'll, I'll throw one other thing in there because what you said, man, that is, that is like spot on. I could not agree more. But I think if, and it'll lead me to my next question here. Um, let's talk about a group of people and let's call them 19 to 35s, 19 years old, you know, out of high school, maybe in college yep. to about 35, right. You know, fairly young, you know, maybe having your family, you know, doing all mm -hmm. that. And what we grew up with the last 20 years in network marketing was that rah, 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 build an organization, build an organization, build an organization. I don't worry about the product. Now my, mm -hmm. my, my own company that you're very familiar with and the company you just mentioned that Jeff is in, I mean, yeah, both companies, very product focused people, right? And there's mm -hmm. others, the guy I met Trump through owns a company now that's very product focused. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I say that to say this or, or to ask you this. So along those lines, you take that group of people, which to me is the next generation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're all getting old, <laughs> better or worse, right? Unfortunately, you know, no, no, no pill to slow it down. Well, you can slow it down, but you can't change it, right? But that 19 to 35 to me is that next important generation that's coming along. You know, my, my son being one of them, for example, my, my son has been over the, since, uh, since a year ago, August, and I'll tell you this, I'd love your response or thoughts on this. A year ago, August, he's going to uh, Dallas Baptist University here in Dallas uh, mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, he, he was just about to start. The then vice president of my company calls me up. And I'll never forget where I was. I was right smack in the middle of the United States. There's a sign in uh, Nebraska that you're at equidistance all over the United States. I was taking a picture and he calls me. I said, I'll never forget where I was. Anyway, so he calls me. He goes, what's your son? And he doesn't know my son. He just knows I have this, this kid that's going to college that's pretty good with the internet. He says, what's he going to do during college? I said, I have no idea. But he was, he was playing a little hockey. He was going to school. And like any college kid, you know, he needs, you know, he needs that extra money that he hopefully won't ask me for, right? You know, even if it's a couple hundred bucks. So I said, I, I oh, yeah. And um, he said, would you mind if I called him? I said, sure. I'll give you his phone number. I'll text him and let him know who you are and give him a call. And you guys talk. And this particular guy himself at that point was in that 19 to 35 group, about 33 years old. And he did. And my son got involved all via the internet and has built customers. And some months he's been number one in the company. He's been, he's been number, last month he was number one. Some months wow. he's been two, two, three or four. And he makes some months $800, some months $1,200, some months $1,500. He's made as much, he's made, made more than that. Like make an income claim. You never know who's listening to this stuff. But but he's, he's done really well. I mean, like to the point where, I mean, like Doug, he doesn't ask me for money. <laughs> okay. Like, well, every parent just did what you did. Oh, wait a minute. How do I get my kid? So along those lines, okay. I tell that story and not only is it real, but not to pat my son on the back. He's done a good job and he's a student of the game. He's studying coding right now. He switched from DBU to SMU. So I mean, went from the Baptist to the Methodist. I don't know if he's going to get a better education or not, but, but uh, nonetheless, he's studying coding, which is kind of another element, obviously, of the internet. But whether it's him at that age, whether it's his former executive who's in that, you know, that 19 to 35 group, to me, that's the sweet spot. We have to reach those people as business builders, be they trainers, be they distributors, be they owners, be they trainers, be they whatever. We got to get those folks to look at this industry. How do you converse with them to get them not only to understand everything that we already covered here with the, the dad and the son, but to get that 19 to 35 year old group to look at this and say, hey, I don't want to do Uber Eats part time. I don't want to do Lyft part time. I want to get in this network marketing business that maybe they looked at and said, grandma or grandpa was in XYZ company at one time. That's I, I don't want to do what they did, but they look at it through the set of eyes that they're comfortable with and recognize there's a seat at the table because of all this technology that they understand far better than guys like you and I do, right? How do we, we my question is this, Doug, how do you communicate with them that there's a seat at the table, that they're welcome to participate because they see the world differently the guys our age do, or guys like us that have been in the industry forever. They see a whole different lens. How do you communicate that to them to get enough attention that they say, let me look at your business here because maybe I want to participate? 
It's another great question. You got to understand what's important to that age group. And there is a significant difference between 19 and 35, how they view. So I'm going to go from like 19 to 26, seven, then I'm going to go from 27 to 35. People that are, and I right now I'm coaching probably a half dozen people in that first age group. Somebody asked me to coach them that I coached before. And it's all about understanding that they are very much in a community. Humongous. Community to them is everything. And they go out and help each other, even if it's cross line. That's just how they are. And when you talk to somebody that's 19, 26, 27, 28, something like that, you you don't talk to them about all the money they can make because they know they can do that because they're sharp enough. They've already done their due diligence. They know what they can do, what can be made. You have to talk in, in a way that they can see that they will be part of a leadership team, literally, that can go out and change the profession if they so desire. And when I'm working with these guys, and it's on a, on a weekly basis, that's the one thing that they're always really fine-tuned with, is they like the idea of being part of a community that can really truly help others become as successful as they want to be. They like the race cars, they like the bling, they like all that other stuff, but not as much as you would think, because what they're looking for is something that a lot of them didn't get at home, or a lot of them maybe didn't get at school, is they're looking for that connection, they're looking for that conversation, uh, and they're looking for that community that they feel like can grow them, grow others, and everybody grows together uh, and become seven-figure producers. Now, between 27 to 35, it's a little bit different because community is important, but during that process of that age, they're really focused in more so on the future. They're more focused on where am I going to be when I'm 45? Where am I going to be? Am I going to be married? Probably am married. And you, they're very focused on making a difference, not just in the community, like the really youngsters are, if you will, but I'm talking, they're huge. One of the guys, this number one in a company, is 34 years old that I'm, that I'm coaching. And he is very, very focused on how that he can take what he's doing with his team. He's got a substantial team and make a difference in even in Ethiopia. You know, they, they, they are opening up a... Um, an orphanage and various other things like that. So when you're talking to somebody between 19 and 35, you got to be aware of that. Yes, it, it, it is about the money. Be perfectly blunt. It's, it is about the money, but it's not the thing. I think the main thing between 19 and 26 is community and 27 to 35 is more of a difference, making a difference in a way that potentially could multiply. And that's what I have found through coaching these and observing, listening, and if you stay somewhere in those two worlds, uh, and, and of course, they got there's other things as well, but if you stay in those two worlds, I hope I answered your question, John, you, you will do well because that's what their whole focus is from 19 to 26, 27 to 35. One is community, the other is making a huge difference and carrying on and building some form of a potential future legacy. That is an amazing answer and insight because, yeah, I find the same thing. They're more altruistic, right? If you talk to them about mm -hmm. bling, and you know what does Thompson call it? Uh, what does he call it? Thing? Uh, uh, Lamborghini Burkini. Man, that just, just <laughs> that is that, that yeah. that's 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 not where they live. I laugh every time he says that. You know, and he's right. It's like our generation. We did like that stuff. I'll be very honest with you. I loved that stuff at one time. Okay, at one time, I you, know, you get past it at some point. Is you know you drive the fancy car right. whatever, for a bit. And you go, yeah, okay. Where do you, where do you drive it in Dallas or New York? You know, like you can't open it up, so you, you're just paying a lot of money for something you can't use. Uh, but we've all done made that mistake. But yeah, the younger people, for the most part, you're absolutely right. They're more about you know community and all that. So let's talk a little bit. Let me let me do something so my wife doesn't yell at me, and then we'll do the same thing because your wife. I don't want her to yell at you. So uh, just for those of you who don't know me, but you know Doug, you might want to acquire our books because Doug, you were one of the inspirations believe it or not, for me to put together this moving up book a number of years ago. I put together the one when we were working together. This was the last edition of it. Then I retired the idea of it. And uh, and then this one, Leaving Nothing to Chance, that's the name of the show. Uh, and both of those titles came about because of conversations I had with yourself and other leadership in the industry about some of the things, right? You know, moving up in a comp plan, Leaving Nothing to Chance. But those books have lots of stories about other people. It's not the John Solomon show. It's about the other people. It's just like yourself, Doug. You know, it, it's about the team. This is a team sport done on an individual basis. So let's come back to a couple quick questions on this. 
Mm -hmm. Number one, because whether you're 19 or you're 62, mentorship is so important. Mm -hmm. It is. Talk about that a little. I believe that mentorship is something, it is an accelerator. It's an accelerator of wisdom. It's an accelerator of experience. It's an accelerator of education. It's an, it's an accelerator of personal development growth. And when you have someone that is mentoring you, coaching you, it doesn't matter whether it's your upline or whoever, especially somebody like yourself, having somebody like you, it, it, is, it is an accelerator that doesn't stop. Because I have seen a lot of people that I've been blessed to coach, you know, a year from now, they have the foresight, the wisdom, the prudence, whatever you want to call it, of someone that's been in for three or four years, just because I've been able to kind of pour into them, just like you do, pour into them so they don't have to make the same mistakes. And mistakes are the number one thing that slows down new distributors as well as even five, six, seven, eight year distributors. They continue to make the same mistakes or new things come up, such as AI or whatever. And now there's new mistakes. And when you have somebody that is a mentor, somebody that is a coach, somebody that is, is somebody really take you under your arm and say, come on, I'm going to show you the ropes. Then what you have literally is worth solid gold. I have, I've had three or four powerful mentors in my life, ones that were just totally life changers. And I've had some third party mentors through books like yours and, and various other stuff like that. And my mentor asked me, and I asked me a question one time, John, he says, Douglas, how many multi-million dollar ideas do you need to build a multi-million dollar business? And I thought for a minute, and I went, one? Exactly. And he says, if you learn one multi-million dollar idea from me, which I learned dozens from him, he says, you will be able to take that and go and run with it. And I think that the greatest leaders I know, and I know a ton, I've, I've coached a ton of number one earners. All of them have had the same thing. I wasn't their greatest mentor. Somebody else was their greatest mentor in the company or somebody else was their greatest mentor in church or whatever. And it, it moved them in a way that in two years, they had the experience, knowledge, and savvy and wisdom of somebody that's been in eight or 10. It's an accelerator. That's what it does. So let's talk about some of the tools because you've developed so many great things over the years, but I'm really excited about what you're doing right now. So tell everybody what you're doing right now. Tell them how to get some of the new tools and uh, tell them whatever, whatever you want to tell them, but tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, Doug, because your stuff is are game changers. Your, your books, your training is a game changer. I've seen it with Doug's talking about. I've seen it in people that Doug's coached and worked with. So listen well and Tell them about the new project. You're better than me. I'm just telling the truth. So I appreciate the kind words, but don't let him. Mm -mm. He's better than I am. During pandemic, the Lord dropped into my heart the word legend. And we all understand you're a legend. You know, there's a lot of legends out there. I didn't know what he meant. You know, sometimes that you just have kind of feel your way through. And then suddenly I knew that I was supposed to write a book called Legend. Now, it isn't one of those books that are just nothing but stories of legends, but actual book on seven steps on how to become a legendary network marketer. It was a lot of what I have observed over people like you, my success. I mean, it just, there were seven very functional steps that most people don't teach. And my wife came up with this idea. It's about 250, 240 pages. And my wife came up with the idea. She said, what if you took featured legends, not their stories per se, but actually getting into content as well, that would not only give them the proper due recognition, but also some fabulous content. And we made a list. You were obviously on that list. And he's, a, he's in, I believe, the book uh, Build or, or Lead, one of the two. But there's seven books now. And we haven't come out with one yet. We're going to come out with all of them by Christmas. But it's Legend, Build, Lead, Recruit, Engage, which is about hyper-productivity, Relentless, and then Wealth. And all of them are about one thing. How do you become a legendary network marketer like a John Solomon? How, how do you do that? Now, I'm not interested in AI and I'm not interested in all the other strategies and tactics. I want to know the real skinny. Well, that's what's in these books. Things that nobody else was going to teach you. Because I have a very unique teaching style. And from hearing people like you and what an honor it was to have you and in, 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 I believe the book Recruit, everybody's going to learn from you. 
everybody's going to learn from a lot of the other legends. And these are true legends, John. These aren't people that are popular. Some of these people that have done 10 billion, nobody's ever heard of. And that's why that uh, we were very, we had a high, high mark of volume and members and longevity in the business and, and, and impact. And, you know, you, your impact on the business has been unbelievable. And um, I guess the biggest one was honesty and, and, and integrity. And some people that should have maybe been in these books, they deserve to be in there as far as volume and their integrity kept them out. And this is the best of the best of the best. And as Lisa Grossman say, you know, you know who Lisa is. Sure. Yeah. So it sounds like to me, this is kind of almost like a, a, an elite hall of fame. It's not an elite. It's just people that have the receipts that actually did it versus say they did. Does that make sense? Well, I, you know, I want you to continue, but I'll give you, I'll give you something here. I don't know if I shared this with you last we talked, but Stuart Johnson, you know, sure. video, video, sure. video plus now, uh, mm -hmm. success partners, all that. Stuart had an event when he bought uh, success magazine way back. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what year it was a long time ago. And um, you had to make X amount of dollars to qualify for this, this, breakout session, cocktail party, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I'm standing there with my friend, Dan McCormick, with my other friend, Jeff. Dan's in the book too. With, um, who else? Yeah. You Dan, open Dan, that door. Oh yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan's a great guy, great guy. And uh, very smart. Anyhow, uh, so Dan, Jeff, uh, Larry, of course, was there, Thompson. A handful of other guys. Dale Maloney was still alive there. Old Dale, he's, he's, he's passed, unfortunately. Nice guy. And I'm forgetting a few other guys. So I, anybody hears this that was there, and then I apologize. But we're standing there, and all of a sudden, here comes in a group of guys, to your point. About eight or ten guys coming together. And I said to Roberti and the other guys, I, I think Danny Stanley was with us too that night. And, and I said, guys, who are those guys? And we're all looking at Nobody knows, right? We're like, you know, I don't know these guys. Well, then I see John Addison come in. Well, when John came in, I knew John from my, my corporate time that I spent. I met him years ago when I, when I was corporate with a company. And uh, anyway, long story short, I went to John. I said, these, these your guys? Well, yeah. And they've been in an insurance company that most people are familiar with, right? Or should be anyway. Mm -hmm. That's a legacy company in our industry. Well, those guys never left. Some of them have been there 25, 30, 40 years, they've never left. The top distributors in a, in a number of the legacy companies, right, have never left. Nobody knows their name unless you're in that company, of course. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to your point, to me, that's who I want to be like. And I think I have been like, I've been at my current company 27 years. That's who I want to be like. They're the people who make money in our industry long term, residually, where it comes every single month like clockwork, it becomes mailbox money, right? Whereas the quote unquote hitter is here today, next week he's over there, three years later he's over there, and you go, well, maybe people know who you are because you talk a good game, and you might even <laughs> and you might even know what you're doing, right? But your discretion in terms of building uh, of choosing opportunities that are not only good for yourself but also more importantly for the people who follow you is not so good. I'd love you to talk about that discretion and choosing. The right opportunities because there's a lot of great companies today, but there's also a lot of no. ungreat companies today. What's the difference, and how do they make that determination if they're looking at our industry and perhaps they're not involved currently, but they're a listener of the show? Another great question, man. You just rocking it out today, dude. <laughs> it's something which I call there's got to be a chemistry between you and the product, and a chemistry between you and the company's vision. A lot of times, people will look at a company. And they see just bucks. They see money. And they say, well, I'm just going to go over here. And But the problem is, is there's not that chemistry that really drives success. And in anything, whether it's real estate or whether it's insurance, I know a lot of people get into real estate to fail miserably and because there wasn't that chemistry. They just wanted to see what they could do with it. I think there's a lot of that in direct selling, social selling, because people jump in thinking that I can make some good money here. But when, when somebody wants to do what you've done, uh, somebody that's just done it, mind blowing things in the profession, I tell them the same thing over and over. You got to have a chemistry with the company. It just feels right. You got to have a passion for the product and you'd buy it if, if, if it was just on a shelf. And you've got to have an incredible hunger to help people in a way that perhaps maybe they've never been helped. And that's one of the reasons why I tell them that if you don't give it at least and, and there are exceptions, don't get me wrong, because some company, corporate people make some dumb decisions, you know, they, they, they do other things. So, but with that understanding, you need to give this, and I tell everybody, a minimum of five years. 
preferably 10 years if you really want to do something outstanding. A young lady, uh, which Jody and I worked with, we used to do a uh, kind of like a Bible study on Tuesday night when we were living in Michigan and uh, came with her husband and she joined this company. And to get to show you how God works, uh, they were paying change out of the change jar. That's how they paid their bills. And she wanted to quit three or four times. I said, you got to give it five years. You got to give it five years, five years. And my wife talked, talked her out of quitting at least three times. Just she was ready to go. I'm out. I'm done. Today, she's the number one earner in this company. It's a skincare company. She's making about 400000 a month. That's good money. Yeah, real good money, yeah. But the thing about it is she wasn't going to give it five months or even a year. She just was so frustrated. So this is why that when people are looking to choose a company, look at it from the standpoint of, is there a chemistry where you really feel like this is the company that I, I can do something with? You like the whole feel of it. You like in passionate about the product. You like the comp plan. Doesn't matter what's matrix, binary, breakaway, whatever. But most importantly, can you see yourself five to 10 years from now walking across the stage being in the top 10 earners? That was the question I asked Sarah. I said, can you see that? And she said, no. I said, we got some work. To do. And this is why there's somebody that wants your success, which mind blowing, it's going to take a commitment and it's going to take a decision that will take you through ups and downs. You'll have setbacks, you'll have comebacks, you'll have people that leave you, you have people that join you, but it's got to be focused on the long term. And in 10 years, if you can see yourself or even five years walking across the stage as a top 10 earner, and that's that's the litmus test I've always coached, then at that particular point, you're already way ahead of 99% of the people in network marketing. Did I answer your question? Well, you did. And that's a great answer. So, Doug, I, I don't want to take too much of your time because we, we could probably talk about three hours on a podcast easily. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll probably get that to do this again, by the way. I've, I've done that to I'm a couple guys. Because like I, you know, when, when, once, once the books are all out. But here's where we are now. now uh, I didn't tell you this before. Uh, maybe I did. I don't know. I'm getting old. But uh, so I pre-recorded it. So this call, the people will hear this the last week in November on that Tuesday. I think it's the 28th or something. Mm -hmm. So by the time they hear it, the books are going to be launched. Mm -hmm. where, where do they get them? Legendbook.com. Legendbook.com. Okay. And uh, you're anticipating, but by, by, say, by Christmas. So, yeah, but it's in that realm. Yeah, we should be. Should close. be. Well, our goal is by Christmas, John, is to have it. Three of the books that you can hold, but all seven you can order as a package. Okay. They're, they're going to have book courses with and video courses, obviously. But most importantly, um, when you have books like yours, leave nothing to chance. Phenomenal book. This is why that when you have that kind of book or the book, legend book or, or some other kind of book that people that have actually gone out and got the receipts to do it, that's where the real wisdom is. I know a lot of people have written good books. Brian Carruthers and I were talking about this. You know, Brian, number one over at, over this company. And Brian made a comment. He said, he says, Doug, he says, I, my net worth is more than what I've made the entire time I've been with this company. That's the kind of book you want to read. Yours is the kind of book you want to read. Legend is the kind of book you want to read, not necessarily because of me, but because of all of the wisdom that was garnered. And I'm telling you what, your, what you talked about and what we did during that interview, which your story's being written, was gold. It was just so off the hook. It was crazy. And it's going to just add that much value, that much more value into people's businesses and lives as they read it. Well, and, and there's no, you know, there's no replacement for experience, right? You know, the Old Testament talks about, you know, gain the wisdom of people with gray hair. And I don't know if I say that because mine's all gray now, but that makes so much sense. And what you just said makes so much sense because all the people, you, I, I know some of the folks that, that you interviewed, obviously we talked about, some of them are friends of mine, Brian, certainly a friend of mine many years, uh, mm -hmm. and of course the Thompsons and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, uh, all great people and Dan, but every one of those people. Number one, they've gone on the roller coaster. The ups, the downs, the management changes, the 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 economy changes, the you know FTC, FDA, CIA, FBI on a macro level, right? I mean, on a macro <laughs> level, they, they they've all been there, right? 
And they've all had those those sleepless nights where they're saying, "Hey, yeah, I'm I'm doing my job, and maybe the corporate's not, or maybe corporate's doing great, but I'm not. I'm just not doing what I need to do." Yeah, you know, we've all been there. You know what I mean? Like they, when those guys hear this, they'll they know what we're talking about. But in a, a final question here, Doug, how does the person who isn't a Brian Carruthers, isn't a Doug Barbell, isn't a John Soller, isn't a Dan McCormick, isn't a Larry Thompson, isn't a Taylor Thompson, isn't a Lisa Grossman, but wants to be? If there were three things that they could change today in their thinking, what would those three things be? Number one, they would have to change the picture that they hold in their mind of where they're going. We think in pictures, not words. When you think of pink pig, you see a pig that's pink, a little curly tail, but you don't see P-I-N-K-P-I-G. They have to change the picture because the picture that you hold in your mind of where you're going with that business, you're telling the subconscious, your GPS, that's where we're going. And you don't even know that what damage you're doing if you're looking at yourself seeing I'm struggling right now and that's all you see in your mind. You have to keep the picture of a future place, a destination. The second is you got to prophesy. I, some people call it future truth. It doesn't matter what it's called. Uh, Dennis Whaley says self-fulfilling prophecy. I believe that you have to speak into your future and make sure those words are decrees and declarations that the Bible says, but you have to speak into your future so that your mind knows this is where we're headed because your mind listens to 100% of what you think and 100% of what you say. And when you have a picture of going and building a eight-figure business and you're speaking it out and declaring over it and into your life, what happens is, is it changes your thinking because the subconscious takes a hold then and says, oh, we got to go this way, not that way. And then the third thing that a person has to change in their thinking, which is probably the most important, they have to see themselves as already there. Arnold Schwarzenegger said that he, when he got into the United States, he had a dream and he lived into it. And I'd never heard that phrase before, but lived into it. And I studied that and you have to literally in the morning get up and understand, I, I get it. Y'all are, some, many of y'all are perhaps maybe struggling and prospecting and, and, and social media and everything else. All that's temporary. When you start moving and living in your mind, this is where we're headed. This is what I'm speaking. And this is how I see myself. And this is the only, and we call it the rule of NOPO, N-O-P-O, no other possible outcome. Hmm. When you have that mindset, when you're so targeted to those three things, it cannot not happen because all three are biblical. And when you combine those three things, man, I'm telling you what, you will hit a home run every single time. Maybe not as huge as you have. You're, you're like in the top 0.001% oh, 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 or something, but, it, but it's going to be humongous what happens. Well, Doug, this has been a privilege, a pleasure, and cannot wait to get my hands on those. Sounds to me like Christmas week, I'm going to be doing some Doug Fireball reading, but that'll, that'll be a great time and a great luck with the book. I know it's going to be a home run bestseller. And most importantly, it's going to bless a lot of people and that, that want to walk the walk that, you, that you've walked, that I've walked, that some of the folks that we just mentioned here have walked and want to have great lives and help other people. Because all those people we just mentioned too, I've helped a heck of a lot of other people to get better. Thanks for having me on. What a privilege and an honor because let me tell you something, leaving nothing to chance, guys, that book will change your life. I promise you. Thanks, Doug. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Leave Nothing to Chance. If you want to know more about what it takes to succeed in the network marketing space, join us again next week for another amazing episode. For additional resources and to connect with John Solider, visit leavingnothingtochance.com. Don't forget to leave a review and we'll see you next time.